<laughs> Nothing else like it in the entire country. And that is why it has been so difficult for people to understand why it is so different and why they have messed it all up so terribly. Marjorie took an amazing sense of place, an amazing ability to describe that sense of place. Marjorie helped scientists move further into a sense of the whole connection by asking those in-between questions that a scientist who is studying just one part of it doesn't see. When she took the train from New York down to Florida, she fell in love with Florida. She fell in love with the Everglades. The whole Florida thing, the South Florida thing, I love the tropics and the light and the sun and the openness of the landscape and being near the sea and so on. She lived along the Miami River with her father, Frank Stoneman, and wrote for the newspaper and got to know the early settlers of Miami as a gossip columnist for the paper. Marjorie wrote the book in 1947. It actually made people aware that the swamp in South Florida, Central and South Florida, actually was a, an ecosystem, not simply a swamp. And by pointing out that it actually was a river, she created a new awareness that there was actually flow from Lake Okeechobee south, from the Kissimmee River north of Lake Okeechobee all the way down to Florida Bay. And that uh, that flow carried with it nutrients, provided fresh water for bountiful wildlife, birds, and all sorts of uh, creatures. Marjorie understood the science of the Everglades and how important it is to our whole climate here and biology of South Florida. Her book in 1947 really championed that the Everglades needed to be preserved. It was an ecosystem like no other in the whole country or the whole world. A young man by the name of Joe Browder, who was the representative here of the National Audubon Society, came to me uh, to tell me that he needed help to fight a proposed jet port out on the Tamiami Trail. When Marjorie started the Friends of the Everglades, the concept was to get a sufficiently large group that could respond and attend hearings and to be an advocacy group for the Everglades. And as a result, they were, although small, able to project a presence that was greater than their numbers and have a significant effect on the public perception of the Everglades and, and its importance. The wildlife, the birds and the animals and the snakes are an indication of conditions because where you have the wildlife diminishing as you do here in South Florida, it means there are bad conditions that will also affect human being. She started Friends of the Everglades with the idea that membership would be a dollar a piece, which could just cover enough mailings to keep in touch. This was not a way to raise money and become, you know, a swollen bureaucracy or anything else. And Marjorie and her friend Kitty and Mike Chinowitz got in a, a motorhome camper and went around Lake Okeechobee with Marjorie making speeches to anyone who would listen to her all the way around the lake through Okeechobee City. Mike was a very young man with a very large beard at that time. Since it seemed complicated to explain why this young man was so interested in environment or something, Marjorie simply introduced him to people as my illegitimate grandson. Friends of the Everglades was a nonprofit that she founded in 1969 unceremoniously. Our group, which is a legacy of her, work with many other environmental groups. But if we don't like what they're doing, if we think they've caved or whatever, 
we, we stand up just like Marjorie did. She didn't have the mission that came to her with Joe Browder's request that she help with this new cause. She'd always believed in it. She had always believed in protecting wildlife and so forth, but it had not been her mission and it became her mission. And I think that it probably preserved and extended her life because it made her part of current events and important things. Marjorie loved being a hero. She was not vain. Uh, she was not doing any of this because of personal egotism, but she loved showing off. The pollution of Lake Okeechobee must be cleaned up by the, by the dairy farmers who polluted the northern end of it. They've got to clean up their act, and the sugar people in the southern part, which polluted the southern part of the lake, were back pumping their water. She loved being a hero. She loved going out and fighting effectively and joyously for what was right. I remember hearing about um, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, that she used to interact with the Miccosukee and Sem Seminole people a lot. She used to talk a lot and come visit the people. And the elders would say, you know, she was always asking about, you know, the Everglades and trying to learn. And they would talk to her about, you know, the environment and different things and, and um, the understanding of it. I think what they, they had a great, our people had a great part in doing is helping her understand the nature of, of the Everglades of Florida and understand that the Everglades was a river. We, we always knew it was a river. And in a way, she kind of helped gave our people a voice on the need to protect the Everglades. It was very difficult for the other side to be mean to a little old lady, particularly when she got to be a 90-year-old little old lady. You know, from the very beginning, I guess from the first time I met Marjorie, she was a white-haired old lady, the kind of nice lady that a gentleman should not be rude to. <laughs> and so they didn't fight back rudely. <laughs> they didn't pick on. They didn't try to destroy her reputation. They just wished she would go away. <laughs> Marjorie has been admired by many, and she should be. She was very feisty. She didn't care who she was talking to. If she felt passionately about the issue, she would state her case. The wonderful thing about being a woman in her 80s was that people had to be kind to her. Anyone who disagreed with her, even forcefully, would lose in that encounter. And many people who completely disagreed with her ideas of environmental protection and preserving the Everglades were people who nevertheless understood that they should not get into a debate with her because she could make them look silly. I think Marjorie's legacy is that we still have a chance. I think we would have gone too far to come back if it had not been all of those things together in one pretending to be little old lady that had so much an effect on so many people, so many policies, so many things that happened. The legacy of the fact that uh, you will hear, oh my gosh, look what's happening, oh my gosh, look what's happening. We're not digging coastal canals anymore. We're rewinding the Kissimmee River. We understand that we can't just build a bigger dike around Lake Okeechobee and turn it into a 20-foot pool of water with no marshes that has toxic algae blooms in it all the time. We know that the river of grass is vital to the survival of Miami and Everglades National Park and Biscayne Bay, not just a pretty place that we love. That's because of Marjorie. Uh, that might not have happened. <laughs> I think ultimately it was the fact that she was an environmental hero by reason of being the right person in the right place at the right time with the right training and preparation so that she could carry that banner and deliver that message and fight that war. So what does she stand for? 
She stands for so many things it's hard to encapsulate in, in one word, but she was um, effective with respect to preservation of the quality of water in South Florida, and she was an inspiration to more than one generation of people. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and her impact and everything that she started, it's just a real inspiration for people, especially my age. She's made such a big impact on not only my school, but other environmentalists throughout Florida, throughout the nation, throughout the world. And from me being an environmentalist, she has truly inspired me to try to get all of my views out there and try to fight for what I believe in. And I think that's really helped in my own fight. If you say a thing is hopeless, it means you think you know more about it than anybody else because you think it's not going to end right. You don't know. Nobody knows. You've got to take a chance. And that's what's exciting. It's a, it's a battle. Who knows how the battle will come out?